Thank you for having us here. I will talking about our team just a little bit. We are very excited. Our guys have worked very, very hard starting all the way back to January. And they set this as a goal was to, to win our conference. And I was speaking just a few minutes ago when, when it became a trip to New Orleans, if you could be the conference champ, that became even a little bit more of an incentive. So our guys, you know, set that goal to win. Uh, become conference champ, and, and they were able to do that. We're, we're really proud of them. Their hard work has, has benefited the university and then just, you know, them playing for each other. Um, so we're, we're very excited to be here. Um, we know that we face a, a heck of a challenge on Saturday night. There's no doubt about it. Um, Middle Tennessee State is a, is a really well-coached and uh, physical and, and athletic football team. So uh, to be able to have the end of the season, you know, culminate here, in this type of game with, with this type of atmosphere against that type of team is something that uh, we're exceptionally uh, excited about. Um, but uh, I can't say enough about our kids, you know, um, and their, their preparation and their enthusiasm and the things that, uh, that they've been able to do this season. And not just this season, but some of these seniors are, uh, you know, fourth and fifth year guys that have, uh, you know, kind of set a very high bar for anybody to follow, players to follow afterwards. But um, uh, again, I had ourselves a little bit of a, an issue earlier in the season, and these guys really bailed themselves out and carried on throughout a, a great week. So um, that's kind of where we're at with this whole thing right now. I want to individuals. Mark, you mentioned playing for each other. Um, obviously, there's been a lot going on around the program for the last two weeks. It was clear last week when we came up and talked to the captains that they were really, uh, really kind of rallying around one another and making Well, it's, it's been really easy because uh, of our players, uh, the type of people that they are. Um, they, they haven't missed a beat. You know, any time, there's been a lot of things thrown at them the last couple of weeks, and what they've done is, is quickly uh, gotten out to practice and started running around and playing football, and they, using that as their outlet every single day has, uh, has made this, uh, I wouldn't say it was easy on them, but it's made it every day refocusing, regrouping, and, and moving on. So uh, with, with these type of kids, if it was – a different group uh, that didn't quite have the, the compass that they have, it, it may have been a whole lot more challenging. But I, I think they've been uh, incredible as far as uh, being able to just keep on keeping on and understanding that this is not about anybody other than those guys that they sit in that meeting room with every day and they've been to the weight room with for months and months and they ride that plane with and, you know, play football with, you know, at the end of the day. They know that, they understand that, and their love for each other is – is uh is powerful you know it really really is so it makes it great as as coaches and me being able to be blessed enough to step in and fill these uh this role for the last week and a half uh to sit back and enjoy watching what they do on a day-to-day -day. it's it's really special coach is there, a, is there a team on your schedule this year that's similar to middle tennessee and if so what what, is, what do they do specifically that is a concern well i don't know if there's anybody Similar. Uh, that's a good question. But uh, they do a lot of things that are of uh, great concern. They, uh, they are, you know, their offensive scheme is very, very tactical. Uh, they're going to try to constantly put you in situations uh, to test to see if you can just line up correctly. Uh, it's not your typical standard formations. It's not just 5-0 linemen and, you know, four receivers and a run. you know, whatever it happens to be, 11 personnel, 10. They're going to put you all over the place and see if you're, uh, capable of accurately lining up, uh, number one. Number two, um, you know, skill set wise, they've got, uh, you know, a, a, a very athletic offensive line. Uh, I think Chandler Brewer is probably the leader of that group. But when you look at that offensive line, there's three seniors and two juniors. And, you know, we, we all know experience is, is, um, is, we all cherish those experienced players. But when you've got those guys up front on the offensive line, it made me more than any other position because they've worked together, they've bonded together, and uh, that's the ones that get it done. So what a challenge for us to go against that caliber. You know, three seniors, two juniors, uh, and I think most of the backups, if I remember looking at it, most of the backups are upperclassmen as well. Uh, so you've got a really experienced group. And then, you know, they've got uh, Mobley, the running back. He's a 
a huge you know monster of a back. His balance is incredible, and, and then. You know, you know, you look at Ty Lee and some of those guys, the receivers, they're explosive. And then what sets it all off is um, uh, Brent Stockstill. He, uh, he doesn't give up on a play. You can have two hanging off of him and three closing in, and he's still going to find somebody uh, that's interested in catching the football. And he's going to try to uh, get that football in there. And he just makes plays over and over, no matter whether he's getting hit uh, or whether he's standing there you know, wide open with plenty of time. He's a big-time playmaker. So, obviously, that's a really big combination uh, that, that makes for a, a heck of a challenge for us on Saturday night. And then defensively, they, uh, they've got some really athletic. And, you know, myself being a defensive line coach, as I watch the, the, their defense against other teams, um, there's some talented kids on that, that front group, and they rotate some guys in. And uh, there's some length and some speed. So, you know, we'll have our challenges to block them. And then in the secondary, uh, there's, they've just got – an extremely talented group. So offensively, defensively, uh, you know, the whole team is going to be a great challenge for us, I do believe. Well, I'll say it again. I don't know if it's anything that I did. Uh, I think they're fully aware that, you know, and we talk about it all the time. Uh, Coach Satterfield did a great job of it, and, and I'm, I'm hoping that I've done a decent job with them this last week or so here, but uh, they understand, and everybody does, when, when you play football, no matter how it happens, whether it's just seniors graduating or, or any other combination of things, the group will never be the same. And when you look around the room, you know, hey, this is our special group that we're working with right now. And no matter what, next year there's going to be some different people sitting here, whether it's freshmen coming in or, or who knows you know, what situation it might be, uh, whether it's coaching or, or – or just the players, there's always going to be a different group. And what they've been working for, the goals that they set, uh, and then you know the standard that they've tried to live to, and I think they've done a supreme job, uh, is special for this group and this group only. So the, the seniors make it really, really easy. I mean, anything that needs to get done, um, I've heard Coach Satterfield say it, and I know a player-led team is what's going to work. And uh, you can try to force something on people, and that's, that's fine, but if the players – or, or making it happen from inside out, then, then you've got a chance for it to be successful. And I think that's what these, these uh, guys have done. Sure. Um, well, the secondary is uh, they are a, a, another special group, uh, no doubt about it. They're, they're a very athletic uh, group of young men, but I don't think that – Necessarily, their athletic ability is the only reason. I don't want to take away from that, but uh, they they came up with that name uh, with um, you know our, our secondary coaches probably four or five years ago. I guess it may have been longer. Um, but uh, and and when they when they decided that was going to be their uh, mantra or their name or their logo, uh, they took pride in it and they decided it's not just something we're going to say. We're not just going to break down on this but we're going to make this group a little bit unique and special. So they kept working and, uh, and, and again, setting goals and saying here's where we're going to be today, tomorrow, and then at the end of the year and have, have kept working with that. Now, there, there's some really talented players there, you know, uh, you know Clifton Duck and Tay Hayes and, uh, and, you know, our secondary Josh Thomas and uh, Des Franklin and Austin Exford. I mean, it's a great rotation of young men that go back there. And uh, so – you know, I think they have set, again, a mentality. And, and being able to stop the run, that, uh, that all starts – it starts right there over the center. If, uh, if our nose guard is, is not getting to where he's supposed to be, then nobody else can fit off of it. And, uh, you know, Coach Brian Brown has been our defensive coordinator all year long, but Dale Jones is a guy that uh, he, he fits run as good. He's, he's just – He's really gifted in that area. And as long as those guys all buy into the system and they understand that it's not just about being big, strong, fast, athletic, but if I fit, then that allows Anthony Flory uh, or Jordan Fair to fit. And if we're there, then our safeties can come down off of that. If there's one crease or one mistake, then there's a chance that it doesn't work. So that's what we rep and, and practice and, and try to instill in them. And, and again, they, they understand that and they've bought into wanting to fit things out correctly and not just being fast and explosive, but fitting the scheme of the defense the way it's prescribed to be. Mark, their offense really, to your point, their line is a good job around. They really put a lot of maybe extra pressure on the linebacker group. 
sure. They're going to have to be involved in passing this. Um, you know, it, it is a little bit different than maybe anything you've seen this year. How have you guys tried to adapt to what you understand Middle is going to bring at you and get that linebacker group ready to, to play maybe a different kind of style of play? Well, obviously, our, our, our defensive staff is. Uh, tried to simulate as much as what we've seen on tape all week. And, and, but the big thing is, you know, uh, they're a very creative um, offensive group. So the, the thing you can't prepare for is what they may have come up with with the extra time having two weeks to prepare. So uh, those types of things, you'll just have to get to the sideline and, uh, you know, talk gap, talk scheme, talk uh, alignments, and, and make a change. Uh, but it, it's just repetition. It's trying to give them as many opportunities to practice uh, the new things that, that, that middle does that we haven't seen in other games and continuing to go over that and over that and as many opportunities as we get between now and, you know, well, a week and a half ago and, uh, and Saturday night's game. Uh, and then, again, ad adapting to whatever's new because I'm sure there's going to be several new wrinkles uh, that we're not prepared for. My last game? Well, unfortunately, we lost that game. Uh, that, at that time, we were in a playoff system. Um, we were an FCS team. I think it was just one double A at that time. Uh, we were, we had won 12 straight ball games, so that was uh, a good ride. Very, very fun. And, and again, a, a special group. The biggest thing I remember is the people, because again, you know, three years prior to that, we had. Uh, I believe it was the only losing season that Jerry Moore ever had. Uh, you know, very legendary coach, and, and um, he, that was his only losing season. The next year, those seniors, those captains made a decision, you know, wasn't going to be that way. The following year, we end up winning 12 straight games. And I, I, unfortunately, uh, the last one, which was in the second round of playoffs at home, and we were leading in the fourth quarter, uh, we, we couldn't hang on to that. And we ended up losing uh, uh, in Boone. So uh, I remember now, you know, many moons later, you know, you, you can't get that back. So you'd like to go back to that person 20-some years old and, and change some things at that time. Um, and that's the message to these guys now. They still have an opportunity to make sure we do right prior to Saturday night uh, and get these things fixed because you will remember that game forever uh, if it's the last one you ever play. And that was it for me. Basketball? Yeah, one of them Ooh. Sure, sure. I do not know him well. I saw him last night, and uh, to my knowledge, when, we, when I left the game, they were winning. And from what I heard, they did end up winning last night, so that was good. I, I don't know if we brought him luck or if they were just destined to win either way, but uh, you know, that's a tremendous accomplishment, obviously, to, to be that successful in the uh, NBA is – is a, a fantastic accomplishment. And uh, I, I don't know him. I know of him. Obviously, uh, being in that uh, level of, of coaching, you know, his name and face is everywhere. But uh, it's, uh, it, it, either way, him being a Mountaineer for myself uh, makes it very, very special because I, I, you know, I, to me it's a cherished place. And uh, the fact that he was there, and he, he was there before me, so he made some uh, – he paved the way for – other people to come. Now, he was a basketball player and I was a football player, but it doesn't matter. There's a special bond between Mountaineers, in my opinion. Thanks, sir. Yep, thank you very much.